Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Vicky here with a new card today. I will be working with this C6 tie. This is called a rustic bouquet and I will be creating a very realistic looking uh, flower. For doing so I will be using a new toolkit by C6. I am going to open it up for you so you can see what's included. So you get three styluses. Each of them has a different nib. There is also a pair of scissors as well as uh, some tweezers and I will be using this kit um, in uh, this video so you can see how everything works. Now there are also two different mats, one very squishy one and uh, the teal one which is quite uh, thin. So I will be using this later on in this video. Now I'm going to grab some paper so that I can cut out my flower and for that I will be using this uh, paper by Ranger. This is Distress Mixed Media Paper. It's quite thick so it is going to hold the shape of my flower and at the same time it takes uh, Distress Oxide inks beautifully. And that's what I'm going for. I will be using my Distress Oxide inks to color every part of uh, my flower. So I'm going to cut out two pieces there so that I can cover up the dye. And remember this is a big dye which means means that it cuts out lots of thick materials so I can easily cut two layers of this uh, cardstock. I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine and by the way this is my C6 Big Shot machine. This is a limited edition, it has a gorgeous design and um, it is available, it is a UK version and I think it is available everywhere else but um, the US and Canada. So anyway you will find links down below in case you want to check it out and I also did a video review on that as well. So this die, once uh, you cut it once, it is going to give you one bigger uh, flower and a smaller one, but I wanted to have lots of layers on my flower, that's why I cut out everything twice, so I end up having two leaves and four different flowers, as well as uh, two centers, which of course I'm going to use only one. Now to color everything I'm going to use my Distress Oxide inks. So first of all I'm going to apply some uh, ink directly on top of my craft mat. By the way this is a glass mat by Tonic that I'm working on. I'm going to spray with water. And you can find the names of uh, all the inks that I'm using every time on your screen as well as in the links down below. Now I'm going to use the center and just dip it in uh, my ink there. And since I had two centers cut out, I decided to go for the second one as well. You never know, maybe I will mess up with the first one and uh, the second one will come in handy. I'm leaving these uh, centers to dry and I will move on on a clean area of my glass mat. And this time I'm going to use these three colors. And uh, then again I am going to spray water on top of them. And these are the colors that I will be using to color all the flowers, small and bigger ones. Now notice that as I'm working on uh, my flowers I haven't cleaned the area with the yellow and orange ink and that's because I want to dip those centers one more time when everything is dry and that's exactly what I will be doing with those flowers as well. So just dip it once, let everything dry and then dip again. If I keep dipping again and again before the first layer dries then uh, all I'm going to do is to just mix the colors and I will not uh, end up with that beautiful variation and depth that, that I am going for. So now I'm going to apply some green colors on a clean area of my glass mat. I have first applied the two darkest colors that's peeled paint and forest moss, sprayed with water. I'm going to dip my leaves there and then uh, I will end up uh, on the second layer you will see later on and that uh, I added a lighter color which is Twisted Citron just to lighten it up a little bit. So now I am just using my heat gun to speed up the drying process and once everything is nice and dry I'm going to dip them one more time on the inks that I have already on my glass mat. This way I will end up with more texture and more depth on my flowers as well as on my leaves. So I'm just going to clean my area there with a cloth and you can see how easy it is to clean. And I'm going to apply a little bit of that uh, lighter color that's um, Twisted Citron to finish off my leaves. With my blending tool I'll go around my cutouts and I'm going to add just a touch of uh, gathered twigs and this is going to get rid of that um, different colored edge and at the same time it's going to give a more realistic look on uh, my flowers and my leaves.
Now on the leaves you can add even more of that uh, brown color. It's going to like, make them look imperfect and it's going to add into that uh, realistic look that we are going for. Now I grabbed my paper sculpting tool and I'm going to show you how I did one of uh, those flowers and one of uh, the leaves and um, this is the exact same process that I followed for the rest of my cutouts. So first I'm going to work on the black uh, mat. This is the squishy one. I'm going to use one of my styluses, the one with the medium ball and I'm going to go around my petals this technique uh, smoothly breaks the fiber of uh, the paper and it allows the flower to become dimensional. I'm also going to use the smaller tip of my um, stylus there and I'm going to press at the center. Do that with all your flowers and leave them to side for when it's time to assemble them. Now I'm also going to use my uh, tweezers and I'm going to turn some of uh, the petals only the edges and in some areas just to add that realistic look. Now I'm going to move on to the leaves. This time I'm working with uh, the stylus that has that uh, pointy tip and uh, notice that I'm not working on the very squishy mat this time and all I'm doing is just using that, that stylus as if it is a pen and drawing let's say the vines on uh, the leaves. And I'm going to zoom in for you so hopefully you can see the result. Then I'm going to take these leaves and put them on top of the squishy mat and then do again the same technique where I'm using one of the styluses with the ball on one end and just adding dimension at the back of the leaves this time. Breaking the fibers then and adding lots of dimension. And now I'm going to use my tweezers, pinch at the center of the leaves and fold. So this is a lovely touch at the end that is going to give lots of dimension and uh, texture on uh, your leaves. I'm just doing the technique where I'm turning some of the ends just to give those imperfections. And it's the same technique for pretty much every part of my flower. So this is where I'm uh, uh, shaping the center of my flower. And now it's just a matter of putting everything together. So at the back of my center, I'm going to add a foam square. Actually, I did add a, a couple of them since it was quite dimensional. I'm going to stick that at the center of the smaller flower. And then I'm going to add one inside the other. As I'm sticking them down, I'm making sure that the petals do not overlap. So one petal falls in between the petals of the previous layer. Hope you can understand what I'm trying to explain here. This is going to give more dimension and more fluff on your flower. So this is assembled and ready to go. Now from this uh, pad by Tim Holtz, I'm going to use one of his metallic golden uh, papers. And uh, I'm going to use that to cut out a lovely background for my card. Now these dies are uh, designed by Sizzix UK, which means that most of the dies that I'm working with today are not available in the US and Canada. However, don't despair, there are uh, so similar dies over your part of the world by Sizzix, which I am going to make sure to link them down below as my suggestions, if you want to go with this look on your card. So make sure to check out my supply list. You will find there both links to European and US online stores with my suggestions. Now my card base is going to be a craft colored cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have also cut out an off white cardstock that's slightly smaller than the standard card. I used my uh, Tim Holtz distressor to distress the edges as you can see a lovely technique that I haven't done for so long I remember back in the days I used to do that a lot now I'm uh, going to add um, a little bit of uh, gathered twigs on my craft mat and um, I, with a brush I'm going to add some splashes on my panel just to distress it a little bit more and so that it's not as white I think that it adds a lot to the look that I'm going for now it's time to assemble my card. I'm using my Nouveau Deluxe white glue at the back of uh, my elements to stick everything down. I love this glue just because it's not very wet, which means that it's not going to buckle your paper when you apply it on top of it. It dries really quickly. 
And uh, at the same time, you do have uh, that um, few seconds to move your elements around if you're not happy with uh, how they are stuck on top. So now I have uh, glued down my flower. Now I'm going to decide where all those leaves are going to go. It's a very versatile design and can be used for pretty much any occasion, depending on the sentiment that you decide to go with. Now, there is um, enough uh, space, enough area at the bottom right corner where you can stamp your sentiment. Instead, I decided for this card not to stamp anything in front. I think that it's lovely as it looks. So, on the inside, I'm going to turn it into a birthday card. I'm going to cut out the word smile. And this comes from a Sizzix style that's called Sentiments and it gives you three different words, smile, dream and hello. So I am going to stick that on the inside of my card. Again, I have cut it out from that gold metallic cardstock. So it matches perfectly the outside of my card. And I'm going to stamp underneath with black ink the phrase, it's your birthday. Don't be afraid to add dimension to your cards for that extra wow factor. This is quite dimensional, but it's not a card I'm going to send by mail. I made this card especially for a dear friend of mine. I'm going to hand it out to her along with her birthday gift. And I can tell for sure that this would be a lovely Mother's Day card. So that was the card for today. I hope you had fun, you got inspired. Make sure to leave me a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to my videos already, make sure to do so. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.